Hey guys, well welcome. We're so happy to have you with us this evening. We're just gonna jump right in because we, we have an hour to uh, hit our topics. And um, I'm Laurel Richardson. I'm the Director of Community Outreach for the CMTA. Um, we have a few other hosts with us this evening, but before we dive in and um, the others introduce themselves, I want to give this very important disclaimer, and that is to say that we are not licensed counselors, we are not psychotherapists, we are not child psychologists, but we do have CMT and or we have children with CMT. So this is going to be a very casual discussion. Um, our sort of style that we're gonna to use tonight and see how it works is um, there are four of us moderating, Jonas joining us as well, and we are going to each take a topic. And so these are, we get um, subject matter from what comes in from the community, whether it's in the dis discussion groups on Facebook or questions that come in all the time to the CMTA. So we've picked sort of those, some of those four um, hot topics to work our way through this evening and um, we will just have a great discussion and we'll have to call on people if you wanna contribute. Um, so we'll, we'll watch out for hands. You can also put something in the chat if you are so inclined, but thank you for joining us for a casual discussion. This is being recorded. Um, and if you want to stay on mute while people are speaking, that would be helpful as well. So I've introduced myself I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Olat, and I have been involved with the CMTA since my son, Johan, at seven years old, was diagnosed with CMT. Uh, we don't have CMT in our family. He was a spontaneous mutation. And I got very involved with the CMTA at that point, and here I am, and I'm on the board of directors and an advocate for people with CMT. Thank you. Thank you. California. Oh yeah, California. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Good evening. My name is Gina Sweeney. I am the Director of Development at the, at the CMTA. And it's a true pleasure to be uh, on this Zoom meeting uh, this evening. I was diagnosed with CMT about 35 years ago. Um, I have 1A. And I am a mother of two, and I will share my story uh, with you. But um, I love this opportunity to share um, my learnings, um, not from just having CMT, but also the questions that come in from the CMTA. So I look forward to, uh, to spending the next hour with you all. Thanks, Tina. Jonah? Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. I'm Jonah Berger. I am the National Youth Programs Manager for the Sharkham Marie Tooth Association. I am the possessor of CMT1X, and uh, it's throughout my family going back through the roots, and um, father to a daughter now, a two-year-old with CMT1X. That's Amelia. Um, and as my role has kind of evolved within the CMTA, I have done more and more talking with parents and more and more helping parents to um, enter into the world of CMT, not just for themselves, but with kids. And there's so many resources at our disposal now. So I just am thrilled to be here with you and hope I can shed a little light on you and trust that I'm always, always here if anyone needs to connect. Thanks, Jonah. So we're gonna dive into our first topic. I'm gonna take that one. And that is the, the um, sort of touchy subject matter of having choosing to have biological children, even though you know you have CMT. So I have CMT1A, it runs in my family, of course, like wildfire, multiple generations. Um, I was diagnosed at six, so I knew uh, you know, my whole life that I had this thing called CMT that my dad has. And I really was fortunate that I wasn't terribly symptomatic throughout my life. I was the slow runner, lots of sprained ankles, but did not develop drop foot until um, my 30s. And so could kind of go on with my life. Um, I, um, um, I, you know, dated in my 20s and um, didn't ever feel the need to share with anyone that that I had CMT. 
And then when my husband and I were very serious dating and talking about the rest of our lives together, um, he was actually the first person that I told that I had this genetic disease that uh, you know carries an inheritance rate of 50 50. And, um, you know, with he's you know, an incredibly loving person did not seem to phase him that our children could have CMT uh, there would never even dawned to not have biological children. Um, I mean, truly just never for a day. And I don't know if it's because of how my dad with CMT was always just such a positive role model. It, it, he never complained about it. Even the rough times, he had total reconstructive surgery um, when he was in his teens, um, developed some, you know, really bad sores and stuff on the bottom of his foot, had to walk on those for almost the rest of his life. He's still with us, thank you, but um, had those sores for years. He just never complained about his CMT. I don't think it ever dawned on him not to have biological and he never, you know, we never talked about, you know, will you or will you not have children uh, because of your CMT. So that sort of thinking and topic never came up in our house. So my husband, Chris and I couldn't wait to have children and we knew it was just a roll of the dice. So we have two children, one's a boy, one's a girl, and they are now 18 and 16. And we chose not to test them unless they were truly symptomatic and we needed to clarify what was going on. Because I felt like at the age of six, finding out, but not being terribly symptomatic, that I was carrying this around uh, you know, throughout my childhood and early adulthood. And if I couldn't do something, I would think, oh, it must be that, that CMT thing that I have. I guess I just, I guess I can't do it because of that. And I kind of didn't push myself in some areas where I probably could have pushed myself a little mm -hmm. more. Um, so we chose not to test our children, but we, I now wear AFOs for drop foot. And so my kids um, know all about CMT and uh, they know if um, they develop symptoms that that's probably what it is. And now that they're old enough, we really have left the decision up to them. And at this point they've chosen not to be tested to find out if they have CMT. Um, I will tell you that they have high arches. My son has very high arches. If you saw his foot, you would say he has CMT, but he walks out the door and he goes surfing and he plays on the lacrosse team and he plays basketball and he skateboards and he does all of these things. So I'm thinking maybe right at this point, his balance isn't compromised and he's choosing not to find out. But I have encouraged both of them um, when they are, are very serious and considering marriage or partnering with someone or having children, it is my personal opinion that they should be tested and find out in advance so they can share that information with their partner. And that is simply my personal opinion about uh, them getting tested. So. To make a long story short, that is sort of where uh, this first topic comes in. Do you have biological children? Do you not? And so we want to open up the floor. We're going to try to do it in an organized fashion. And it's really just I like, feel like sharing. So, so Laura, um, can I just jump in and say yeah. there, you know, that was your choice. And everybody, I mean, there are no right or wrong answers, right? So everybody and people might have the same feelings as you do or different feelings. It's all, I mean, everybody has personal choices, but this is, you're just sharing your personal story and you're not giving advice. You just kind of like, this is what we did. Yeah, the other thing. I like to know right away. Um, and I understand that. And we just, we, we chose, chose not to. I just wanted to throw it out there too, in case anyone's new to the Zoom world, down at the bottom, there's a list of things you can click on. And one says reactions on the far right. When you click on that, the, the bottom option is to raise your hand. When you click on that, a little, a little hand will come up in your square and we'll know you have Do you mind? Uh, something bad. Um, so it's you okay, know. Logan. It's Kevin. Oh, we need um, to mute everybody. I'm just going to, yeah, I, I went ahead and muted her. So yeah. if you 
feel like sharing, whether it's, you know, and any, any side of that, this, we're just open for discussion. I have um, a, someone in, uh, in the community, I've talked to several people who knew, of course, that they had CMT, did not want their children to have CMT. So they've gone with the pre-implantation um, so that they know that their embryos do not. Um, some have decided to adopt in my other brand, when I led another branch, I, um, the first time it ever, I, I, it ever occurred to me that, oh my gosh, maybe people don't have biological children because of their CMT was another branch that I used to lead. And two of the gentlemen in there um, shared that they had uh, vasectomies in their twenties because they knew they absolutely did not want to have children. And that's what works for them. And everyone has to do what works for them. Um, like Elizabeth said, I'm just sharing my story, but anyone out there, I'm just looking for hands up if anyone wants to share which, uh, maybe which route they went or their story with that decision-making process. There is one, um, is it Eileen or? Eileen. Yeah. Um, okay. um, so I found out that I have CMT as a child because my dad, um, like you, Laurel, has CMT1A and it runs rapid fire in our family as well. Um, so when I was dating my husband, we had talked very early on about um, having children and we both wanted kids. So I had told him that I have uh, the CMT and about the odds that we'd have kids with CMT. And he looked at me and he's like, my mom has eye, eye issues. Like my dad has melanoma, so whatever. And um, so we decided we have two kids. Um, my daughter's 21, almost 21, and my son is 18. We opted not to test them until they were about 10 and maybe eight because they were starting to show some symptoms and we, um, we wanted to get them some services in school. So we mm -hmm. tested them and we were pretty convinced my daughter had it but we were shocked when my came back that my son was positive also. He's the daredevil of the family. Um, he's, he thought that T-ball was um, stood for tackle ball when he <laughs> played T-ball as a child. <laughs> but today they're both, um, it never held them back. We never used the CMT as an excuse. Um, right. He played, they both played soccer. They both played little league. He played lacrosse. Um, he's a scout who is very involved in camping and hiking. Um, she is a tour guide at her school, so she does tours at her university. We wanted to find out since it ran so much in our family, but we've tried really hard not to let it hold them back at all. Yeah. So that's, that's my story. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Yeah. I knew this. I'm going to unmute because I have a couple of dogs at home. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. CMT I Australia. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I do have a name. I didn't realize I've logged on as, as CMT Australia. My name is Gillian. I am part of CMT Australia, but I also happen to be a parent of um, two daughters with CMT1A. My husband carries the gene um, and we so I'm an early childhood teacher in another life so I was very much I'd had a lot of experience with children with disabilities I'd worked with children with autism with severe physical disabilities and so I suppose when I met my husband Peter it was one of those yeah and like I'd known him for six months before we dated as such and we've been married for 28 years um, and I suppose that he was very, very open and said something about his disability. And I said, you what? Um, I just thought he walked funny, to be, to be honest. I thought it was quite cute, which is a bit odd, isn't it? But no, I don't have a foot fetish either. But ultimately, we went and spoke. <laughs> ultimately, we went and spoke to a... Oh, of course, my phone's going to go off in the middle of this. Hang on a sec. Let's just get rid of that. OK. Um, ultimately, we went to a genetic um, counsellor and sat with them for quite some time and spoke about our options, knowing that we had a one in two chance of passing it on. When we finished that appointment, the counsellor actually said to us, you guys know more about CMT than I ever will. You're going in with your eyes open, go for it. So um, we did have trouble falling pregnant. And my first daughter, who's now 23, um, was 10 weeks early. 
we chose not to test either of them while we were pregnant because, and again, as, as you guys have very openly said, it's everyone's individual choice what they do and how they do it. But ultimately, we would not have terminated a, a child, um, particularly at that stage when I was pregnant, to, to be able to test, it would have actually meant that at 20 weeks we would have got the results and I wasn't in a position and wasn't in a time frame, you know, to be able to terminate at 20 weeks. So we had both of our assisted at 12 months, which was the first time at the time that we could do it, could have had cord blood, but both of my girls were challenging deliveries. Uh, so, and we have, I think, to be honest, knowing earlier, which is where I'm coming from, from an early childhood background, we were able to be proactive in their care and to mm -hmm. ensure that, you know, there was occupational therapists and physios and things like that to make sure that what we were doing was straight in there and being very proactive. We've never regretted that decision. Mm -hmm. Certainly now, as I say, our 23-year-old daughter is does have a partner and that she's already looking at options for IVF um, because we do have that option with 1A. I don't regret having tested them. I am interested to hear from your side. I believe you have a little bit more um, challenging things with your insurance, um, with your medical insurance, and that's something that isn't, I don't seem to think, isn't as much of a problem in Australia. Um, Yes, we, we say that our children have CMT and, you know, both of my, my daughters who work and my husband have actually disclosed that to their employers so that they're aware of that. But ultimately, I feel and when and I'm, I'm the equivalent of Jonah, my husband and I run the CMT Aussie Kids program um, and Jonah and I have spoken a number of times, which is great. So from the point of view of, of only, I was only talking to a mum yesterday who's just been newly diagnosed and is now going, oh, wow, does that mean my 12-year-old has it? So there's lots of challenges. And I suppose what I say to most people is forewarned is forearmed. If you've got information, you've got knowledge about what you have and what your child has, I think that that's more empowering than sticking your head in the sand. But that's my that's my choice. And your choice could be totally different. Okay. I really like that. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, theoretically, um, it, it's a thing that it's really important for you to also empower your children. And when we go on camp, that's exactly Jonah's the same, that you own your CMT. Yes, it sucks, as the kids say, excuse me for saying that. It's not a very polite way to put it, but that's how the kids talk. Um, but they also know that they've got some friends. And I think that when they fall over, they get why they fall over. If they don't know that they've got a problem, then that becomes more frustrating and it actually affects their self-confidence more than having a reason, not an excuse, a reason to be falling over. So yeah, that's I'm, me. I'm 48 and I still say C CMT sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it almost every day. <laughs> so. I'm just trying to, be a bit, trying to be a bit discreet, but. <laughs> yeah. The one anyway. thing I, that we, you know, we went into it knowing that we would be an active family and educate our children all about CMT. But the one thing I didn't realize when I decided to have biological children was I did not realize the severity could vary with each generation. I thought what ran the type of CMT that my dad and I and my aunt had, I thought that's what our kids would have um, and so have since learned that you could be a mild to moderate case and ha you can have a, se a severe, a child with severe CMT. So um, I did learn that after the fact, um, but I, th I, I do agree that knowledge is power. I'm gonna keep us moving. I know we could talk about this one forever, but I'm gonna turn it over to Gina um, for her segment. Thanks. Uh, well, yes, um, thank you for those that shared. It's always really great um, to hear other people's CMT stories. And that's one of the things that I have appreciated over the years of working at the CMTA. Um, and, you know, I think that it has helped to uh, keep me sane with my CMT story. And um, my CMT story has really ch changed dramatically within the last few weeks. The CMT is very real in my family right now. Um, and not that it's, it's not, we just look at it uh, differently, but it's, it looks different right now. Um, and so um, if I start crying a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm not going to apologize because we're in this together, right? So, um, and, and we're all parents. And 
Uh, so the the topic for the next 15 minutes is uh, something that we've touched on already is to test or not to test for CMT. And that is a big question for many, especially like in Laurel's case, that it's, um, you know, it runs in the family. Uh, for me, my CMT is a, spont a spontaneous case, which means there's no one else in my family. It's just me. Um, and, you know, I was, I was the chosen one, I guess. Um, but so, I, to test my two girls um, is, a, is a question, um, is part of my CMT story. And this question actually comes in quite a bit uh, to the CMTA, whether it's by phone or by email. Sometimes I get Facebook messages. Um, and I know that the uh, info at, you know, it comes in a lot of different ways from CMT community members. I personally get that question. My response to them is, do you have a few minutes to chat on the phone? Um, because that is not something that I feel that I can answer through email um, because there is no right answer and there is um, no right decision. The decision as Jillian uh, alluded to is what is best for the family? and really what is best for the child. We really have to think about the child um, in this because um, it's your decision. You may go to a neurologist, you may go to a genetic counselor, um, you may go to the pediatrician and you know they may say no, they may say yes. But I think that this is a family decision and one that you should feel comfortable in making. Um, one of the things that I always talk about is um, what are the pros and cons um, in having your child tested for CMT? Now, if it's a new, a spontaneous case, that's different, right? Um, but if it's a, you know, a genetic um, inheritance pattern, then this is a bigger topic, right? Um, and one that parents are maybe fearful to, to do. Um, what I always kind of talk about, and I will share my personal story here in a moment, but I think that I would um, ask you all and challenge you all if you're going through this yourselves, is to put like the pros and the cons together, right? We're going back to old school piece of paper and a pen. Um, what are the pros and what are the cons? And um, the, the pros could be, you know, um, getting my child tested for CMT um, would ease the anxiety of the child and possibly depression because the child is unable to keep up with their peers on the playground, right? They're, they know that maybe something is going on, but they just don't know what. Um, they know mom and dad might have something. Well, do I have what mom and dad has? So in their little minds, they may have be having so many questions that they're not necessarily talking about. Um, and a, a con would be, well, there's no treatment. You know what? So they need to have a diagnosis of CMT. Um, another pro could be that um, they could become, you know, you could gear them to be physically active in their own way of doing things. Like for me, my, my Riley, she does swimming, she does piano, she does um, uh, riding her bike. So there's a lot of things that I have introduced to Riley other than putting her on the softball field like I have done my daughter, right? So introducing her to different um, things that she can feel confident about and be part of a team. Um, a con may be, well, I don't know how to tell them, right? How do I tell them if they have CMT, what am I going to say? Like, how do I have that discussion? Um, and the last pro um, that I'd like to share is the CMT research. There is so much um, happening in CMT research and, you know, following that um, because testing them, um, no, there is no treatment, but there is a lot of work that, that is being done. So that, those are some of the things that I personally go through um, when I'm talking to, to individuals about whether or not that they should have their, their child 
um, tested, but I am a mother of two and um, my oldest daughter is 20. Um, her name is Haley and my youngest daughter, her name is Riley. Uh, she is just shy 10 days of being 16. Um, so let's talk about Riley first. Riley's story is a little different um, than the typical, uh, she is, you know, she's very clumsy, she's tripping, um, she has high arches. Riley was born with a very serious uh, life-threatening lung disease um, condition called pulmonary lymphangiectasia. It does not have anything to do with her CNT, but um, it is life-threatening. Um, so with lymphangiectasia comes with a lot of other uh, genetic disorders. So at a month old, Riley was genetically tested. Um, and guess what? That extra copy of her PMP22 gene was right there, smack in my face. And I was like, what? Um, I, I wasn't ready for that as a mom, but I did find out. And finding out for Riley at a month old, Hey, Riley, the piano teacher lives right next door. Let's sign up for piano. Yay, how great is that? Um, so I have given her the strength um, um, in knowing that she has CMT and, and me knowing that she has CMT. And what has helped Riley um, become the 16-year-old the that she has today living confidently with CMT um, is that even before I um, had girls, my girls, I was already involved in the CMTA. I got more involved in the CMTA um, after knowing Riley. And that has given Riley, um, you know, a, a, she sees me backing her every step of the way, right? She sees me doing something for her. Um, and that's being involved in, into, the, into the CMTA. Um, and supporting her um, every step of the way, no pun intended. Um, so let me talk about Haley. Haley is 20 years old. Um, so Haley has never necessarily shown signs of CMT. Um, and so I never really, Honestly, I didn't even think about having Haley tested for CMT. It never, ever crossed my mind um, until she was diagnosed with scoliosis. And I know what you're all thinking right now. Well, Gina, scoliosis is a characteristic of CMT. Like, why didn't you have her tested? Um, scoliosis also runs very deep in my husband's side of the family. And um, so just talking to some neurologists, her, you know, her scoliosis was very severe. Um, long story short, uh, Haley got curious as to, do I have CMT, do I not? Um, so I respected that. I said, sure, we'll do all of the, the paperwork. I got the kit. Um, picked her up from school, walking in to, to have her blood drawn. She said, um, stopped dead in her tracks and said, mom, is, is it really going to make a difference if I know right now? Because I don't have symptoms. So what's going to happen? I get, I'm going to know. And I said to her, well, Haley, no, it's not going to make a difference right now. But um, three things. If there is a treatment for CMT, you will be tested. If you start showing signs for CMT, you will be tested. Um, and I forget to, um, oh, and if um, you're planning on having children, um, I believe that you, you should be tested. And she said, okay, um, that's it. I just wanna get back in the car. I threw, I threw away the kit and we've never talked about it since. Um, I respected Haley as an individual for being, uh, for not wanting to be, for, for wanting to be tested and then all of a sudden changing her mind and not being tested. So um, I would be wrong in saying that I don't want to know, I, I do want to know that if she um, has CMT, um, it would be selfish for me at this point to push. Um, 
just to find out when she doesn't necessarily have signs. Um, so two different kids, two different CMT stories. Um, everybody has their own CMT story. Everybody has their own unique child and own unique family. So um, I'd like to just open it up for, for discussion and um, see what uh, your thoughts are if you have any questions. for hands, Gina. Beverly, you have to unmute yourself first. You push the little mic microphone button in the bottom left corner of your screen. Click on that. If you're having problems with that, you can also just hold down the space bar while you talk and that will unmute you automatically. You just hold down the space bar. If she's on a laptop, she might be on a phone. If you're on a laptop, oh, yeah. She's on her iPad. It's right there in front of us, Beverly's iPad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So do you see the, the um, microphone, Beverly, and it says mute? You have to tap that and it'll unmute you. On the iPad, the microphone is at the top on mine anyway. Oh, thank you, Doreen. Beverly, check the top. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good, Good job. job. Doreen, yes, okay. here you go. I just want to say I'm 74 and I was diagnosed at 13. Um, I married at 20, had two children. One, my son has CMT, my daughter does not. Um, I've had extensive feet surgery, back fusion, two hips replaced, and shoulder surgery. Can you still see me? I see a big C in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see. Um, as for this was not really talked about. My mother was the first to have it. She got 71. And this was not really talked about much. So when I had children in my early 20s, um, it was more, well, I have the strength to have a baby, which I did. I didn't have any trouble at all. So I, I worked up until 55 when it finally got kind of hard to work. I never talked about it at work because if you said you couldn't do something, they could replace me. Mm. So it wasn't discussed. I didn't talk about it much with my children either. Um, so, you know, it, it's good that you all talk to your kids. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. My my grandson, my son has three boys and my oldest grandson is almost 33 and he does not want to get tested. Um, one of the problems might be insurance. If it came out that he had it, it could jeopardize insurance and a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um you know, I know it just in speaking to, to several people, um, I hear that often. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it myself. Um, I have never, with that said though, I've never met any individuals that have been denied um, insurance because of their CMT. But I think that that would be a really good follow-up email. I'm happy to, to look into that, Beverly, um, and get back to you. And I, you know, I, I have always talked to, to my girls about my, my CMT. I think my, my CMT in talking uh, about it has taught my girls um, patience um, and empathy. Um, you know, it, cause it takes me a long time to, to button up or zip up their, their coat a lot, uh, a lot slower than their dad. But I think being open with them has given them amazing skill sets, uh, to, to give to, to others as well. So, um, I know my 15 minutes is way up. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Gina, we know you well, it's okay. We were... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, and, and I, I, I'll put my, if anybody, I'll put my email address in, in um, the chat if anybody has um, questions or wants to reach out um, after, uh, please, please do so. All right. I'm fortunate I'm still walking. Okay. Um, I use a walker, but I'm able to walk. That's wonderful. Good for you, Beverly. You. Keep going. As uh, as Elizabeth will tell you, you've got to stay active. She mm -hmm. had a wonderful presentation on staying active. It's so incredibly important. Good. Well, Gina, you actually, you weren't too bad. You only went a couple minutes over. Not bad at all. Good job. And thank you for sharing. All right, Jonah, turning it over to you, my friend. Okie doke, Gina, real quick. The uh, the joke in our family is that you can tell uh, whether my wife is working or if she's at home based on how my daughter's hair looks. <laughs> if my yeah. daughter's hair is everywhere, then daddy's on duty. And if yeah. up in any way, mom is home from work. So that's a yeah. tough sign. Um, I'm going to jump right in, you guys, just to, to make the most of your time and to acknowledge up front that I'm going to speak for about three or four minutes, kind of fast. And I'm gonna throw a lot at you. And then I wanna do that intentionally to leave some time for you guys. The, the question I'm gonna plant with you, I see a lot of parents on this call. I wanna hear from you guys, what's going on with your kid? What would you say, kid or kids, what would you say is the biggest challenge with regards to CMT and your kids? I wanna hear, and have us talk uh, specifically to real things that are going on out there. Um, I'm going to remind you that in the chat box, um, I'm going to put, well, two things really up front. I'm going to put my email address. I'm also gonna put the youth database link. And that is for everyone to have and use at will. Email me anytime. The youth database link is your chance to sign your child or children up for our youth database, which just means we'll keep in touch with you about everything youth related that the CMTA is doing. So it's kind of your one, one stop shop for everything youth. Um, and again, there's my email address right there. Holler at me anytime. My quick spiel to you um, in the big picture, I've got it written down. So I try to stay on, on target is, um, if I were to summarize my whole feeling of parenting with CMT, I'm a new parent, two and a half years I've had my daughter. So I haven't done a lot of parenting directly with CMT because her she's not dealing with any symptoms. I've worked with many, many kids with CMT and I was parented beautifully in my opinion um, by a mom with CMT and a father without. Um, my work to summarize my overall vibe to you, I would say set the bar honest, high, and positive. Those are my three kind of bullet points Be honest with your kids. This is my philosophy. This is my opinion for what it's worth. But I was armed very young. My parents sat me down. I was diagnosed at five and uh, my parents sat me down when I was seven with a yellow pad of paper and a pen and drew the human body and tried to explain to me how the brain communicates with the muscles through the nerves and told me I had CMT before I was anywhere close to being able to absorb it, but I knew it and I practiced saying it and I grew up knowing it and it was my normalcy. It wasn't something held back and then thrown at me. I was brought up with the knowledge of it. So it made it a little easier to swallow. Um, they talk about early inter intervention early on, as it was mentioned before, early intervention is proven to work with regards to physical challenges, the younger you start, the better chance you have of insti instigating some real positive effect as they grow up. My is that emotional is the exact same way. The earlier you begin, the better chance you have of really raising your kids to have a better balance, pardon the pun, emotionally with the path of CMT, not just physically. Um, be honest with your kids. Teach them to be honest with others. Whenever someone would ask, my mom would tell them everything about it. You can tell that when other people heard what was going on, not just looking at the leg braces or looking at how we walked, but knowing why, 
they absorbed it much better. And the same was true in my class. My mom came to my class every year starting in kindergarten and through fifth or sixth grade and spoke to my, my class so that my classmates understood what was going on. My classmates were much slower to make fun of me because they knew there was something behind it. Um, so she believed in really educating them. And when I got old enough, she encouraged me, and I do that with the kids I work with now, to go up in front of their own class your support, and present to the kids in their class at any age. Hey, y'all, you may have noticed that I wear leg braces. You may notice my hands or feet or walk look different. Here's why. Let me educate you why. And when you take that lead role, I think it just puts your kids in a, a position of empowerment. Um, so set the bar high, honest, high, and positive. Hi, I've done two triathlons. I've ridden my bike across the state of Iowa. I climbed the tallest mountain in Colorado, not because I'm special, but because I'm human. And I wouldn't let anyone else tell me what I can and can't do. Came in last place in every single thing I just mentioned to you. <laughs> Place, but I don't care because I did them. So my daughter, when her symptoms kick in, is going to be encouraged to do anything she wants to do. She just has to figure out her way to do it. You can't do things the normal way. You got to find your way to do it. That's my philosophy. It's, it's worked in my world. Um, give your kids an elevator pitch. Help them to boil down this big topic of CMT into a quick and easy way to describe it. And the more armed they are with that right in the moment, the quicker they are going to be to use it. Um, then the last thing I guess I would say to you guys is that in the big, big picture of the period of time through history and up till now, we are at a very wonderful time to have kids with CMT. There is a CMT youth movement going on. Uh, the CMTA brought me on full time just over a year and a half ago, and we have a youth council that's helping to develop and lead these programs. We have a footprint that's going stronger than it ever has. There is youth hangouts that happen every three months. There is Zoom, the Zoom hangouts, the youth newsletters that are happening every three months, written by kids for the kids. We're having our first ever dance for CMT on October 23rd, an international youth um, fundraiser that we're going to do annually. And then the book is coming out this holiday season, 75 kids share their experiences with CMT to the world. So I've had two families, literally two in the last three weeks, contact me with brand new, brand new diagnosed children with CMT. Uh, both were teenagers, both happened to have been 17 year old girls. And I right away connected the girls with girls from our youth council who are 17, who have CMT. And it is amazing, I heard back from both parents um, that the, the take on having CMT instantly switched. Instead of adults throwing things at them, I can easily, no matter what age your kid is, no matter where they are emotionally with it, I can find kids who we work with who are incredibly well adjusted to CMT, who we who are more than happy to reach out and connect with you guys. So my, my long-winded point boiled down, you're not alone. And there's so many wonderful things going on to connect you and your kids with. So don't be shy about reaching out. So that's my spiel. What are you guys dealing with? Let's get a few examples of what you're seeing as parents uh, with regards to the challenges of having kids with CMT. Anyone? You can share a success too, I suppose. Doesn't have to be a challenge. Shona, I'm going to ask a question that Laurel sure. sent earlier. And I, I um, have been pondering this question. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about parents feeling so guilty or you know, having passed on a lot of parents that I speak to didn't, maybe they didn't know they had CMT or they now they're, they're feeling guilty because they passed on the G CMT gene and they're struggling with that. And, you know, that's one situation, but what if your child resents you, the parent for passing that gene on? And I am stuck on that 
question. When I first read that question today, Elizabeth, the first words that came into my head were to look directly in the eyes of your child and say that is a natural reaction to dealing with a lifelong disability. One of the stages of development through a massive challenge, a permanent challenge like that, is to wonder who can I blame? So you call it out for what it is. You tell them that's natural. It's not productive because it's not going to lead you anywhere but upset or negative, but it is natural. So I see that you're going through it. I respect you have to go through it. What I'm here to tell you, so this was actually my true last point that I was going to make before. Whenever I do motivational speaking, I always finish. I actually do a podcast as well. I wrote a book called He Walks Like a Cowboy. My podcast is He Walks Like a Cowboy. And whenever I'm done with an episode, I always use the same quote. It's from an episode of ER, um, my favorite medical drama back in the day. And the quote is, it's not about what happens to you. It's how you deal with what happens to you that matters. That is the quote that I think I live my life by. And it's the exact quote that came to mind when I read that question this morning, is that if your child is caught up in the who can I blame and how could you do this to me? You have to call that out to them and then you have to remind them even before they're ready to absorb it, you can't change that UFCMT, it's done. I know, but you can't change it. What you can change, what you have full power over changing is your attitude around it, is how you're going to deal with it. Yep. The cards are your cards. How you play them is completely up to you keep letting them know that even before they're ready to hear it is my two cents. Marlene first and then Chris. You're on mute, Marlene. Sorry, my. So my granddaughter um, is nine and she lives with me full time. And we found out about, I guess about three or four years ago that she had CMT. So what, are, I mean, we're working with, you know, neurology clinic and our biggest problem is braces and shoes um, throws me over the edge a little bit. So right now, I didn't know if anybody has any ideas. Um, she's always been in AFOs. They are suggesting fat braces. And I don't know if anybody's heard of them or what they are. And where can you get shoes? I mean, I've heard New Balance. That's about the best we do. But my granddaughter loves to get dressed up in pretty shoes when she was little and we can't anymore and that's kind of devastating to me <laughs> um and like what do girls do for shoes you know and braces that's my mom my mom will tell you that one of the first things she had to swallow is that she couldn't wear pretty shoes she says that to this day <laughs> i it's one of the things guys have to swallow too guys love shoes i i always I love sneakers and I can't just buy normal sneakers. I buy New Balance my whole life. There's, uh, there's a couple. Laurel, go ahead. Oh, I was just sorry, Jonah. I didn't know if you were going to mention the Billy Footwear. Um, yep. A lot of people love. Yeah, I just I haven't gotten to that yet. I was on. Yeah, that was my next thing. I think we're going to start looking at that. Somebody. And was I have to say, yeah. um, I'm going to um, speak about Tim Phillips and Claire's on the phone. That he he took sorry. his Billy Footwear. And he painted them with something and made them look fantastic. And the coolest thing, so you find a shoe that you'd like, make them fancy or change your style so that they look pretty to you. I mean, okay. take what you have and make it what you want. Sorry, my and don't reach for what you can't have, you know? Okay. And that's sort of what I do too. Yeah, okay. really, I love that. Yeah. yeah, I do too. I just want to add, Marlene, um, some of the young ladies that I have met, which I, I you know, depending on the type of brace, because there's so many different types of braces on the market now. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of young ladies take um, a boot, sort of stylish boots, um, because it zips all the way down the side. They come up to your your knee. Um, mm -hmm in that and then they put their foot in because some of the boots are very stylish looking and it gives them ah, that okay. support that they need um and then also converse makes a high top and they make them sparkly pretty and they open with um they, they tie and the tongue comes out and the kids can get the, the afo into those shoes um, no. For yeah, they're, not, they, they're not able to tie them very tight 
Um, but the, if they tie them, do the, the object, of course, is to make sure the, the foot is secure, but it wouldn't necessarily, it would be a lot looser than typically. But okay. those are two different, very unique, different kinds of shoes um, that she might want to try. I don't know how many shoe stores that I have left crying, and I don't even wear it. <laughs> Can so, you remind I mean, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, Please. you know, our Facebook group on um, Facebook, our CMTA discussion group on Facebook loves questions like this. And it's been discussed before, but they have such great recommendations. It's people all over the country. And um, so I just encourage you to visit that page and ask that question. So keep in mind, Marlene, that uh, I don't do triathlons, climb a mountain, anything unless I've got my leg braces on. So as much as it's easy to focus on the negative, they will empower your children to accomplish things they never thought could before. Chris, let's go to you, and then Claire will get you last. Um, Chris needs to unmute. Chris Medell. Yeah, he was having trouble with his mic, and he was going to oh. call in, I believe. Chris, oh, is that okay. Okay. Why don't we? Claire, why don't you? Claire. Why don't you give one, and then we'll see if we can get Chris after. Okay, I have two. Um, one is, and thank you for your talk. It's really great. <laughs> um, first is how to build resiliency because I think my I, my daughter is five and a half, so going into kindergarten for reference, um, and she cries bloody murder over every little bump and scratch. And I know it's most little kids do, but I I. I worry that if she's freaking out that much over a tiny little scrape, mm -hmm. how, I'm just, how do I build resiliency for when she gets the big surgeries? And my, mom will, uh, my mom will tell you that um, some of the best lessons that I'm showing as an adult were modeled by my mom for about 20 years before I started showing that I was absorbing them. So I just okay. remind you for what it's worth that from what I've seen over the years and what I'm told will be with my daughter, you don't get a lot of the uh, instant gratification. Keep telling them. It's, it's the one thing I always say to parents, even if it's at a brick wall, keep saying, you know what, you're fine. And even if she's screaming bloody murder, you look at her as calmly as you're able in the moment. You say, you're gonna be okay. You're not in terrible shape. I believe yeah. you can keep going, Elizabeth. I, I just have a caveat to that, Claire. You know, like my son, usually people with 1A, I mean, they say there's no neuropathic pain. Well, he is very highly sensitive. And so he does have neuropathic pain, which makes sitting in a jacuzzi excruciatingly painful to this day. I mean, even if I go to touch his foot, his brain signals pain. Mm -hmm. So. I would rule out any underlying medical sensitivity because people with CMT can have nerves that are sensitive. And when that happens, it does hurt. So you don't want to be, you know, denying her pain, but right. accepting and understanding it too. So just wanted to throw that in because, you know, my mom never listened to me when I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that either. I want to believe her, but also empower her to. Absolutely. So it's a fine line and it's a very tough line to figure out. What yeah. was the second one, Claire? The second one is maybe for kids who have gone through this. Um, it's a little sillier, but uh, my she's having trouble potty potty training. <laughs> it's been just been a long struggle. Like still at five and a half, like still yeah. has accidents almost every day. And I was just wondering. I mean, I know every kid is different anyway. Yeah. But I was just curious whether other parents experience that, if that's related to CMT or if that's just her separate thing. And if it's separate, that's fine. And I'm dealing with it, right? I, I, <laughs> I don't think anybody knows for sure. I would say it's probably behavioral for some reason, but it's not something we commonly hear, but I can't say that with 100% accuracy. Okay. Well, that's that, also, good. that also is a, a perfect example of something to post on the um, discussion group. There is- okay and a half thousand members of that group. I'm putting the link to it right here in our chat. There's 17 and a half thousand members in the group. From A to Z, you post something and you will get so much feedback, some of which may not be helpful, a lot of which it is. So I just always encourage you guys to 
to throw questions out there like that, see what other people have to say. But Claire, I would, I would, I'm sorry to interrupt and I know we're yeah. short on time, but I would, again, medically, I would get that checked out and ask your neurologist because neurogenic bladder does exist with CMT. And some people like don't feel the need to pee and they don't know when they have to, you have to schedule it. So again, rule out the medical stuff before you go right to the behavioral. That would be yeah. my advice. Laurel, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll turn it back to you to wrap up, is that uh, my friend on uh, um, Father's Day last week, whenever that was, uh, called me and said, hey, buddy, I just, because he's having a son as well, he said, I just want to remind you, cheers for the try, okay? And he explained to me that we in our culture often try to make parents feel like there's a right way and therefore a wrong way. It's not. And there just isn't. I mean, 98% of the answer is somewhere in between it. And so my ultimate advice, as cheesy as it may sound, is try your best and fail in living color and own it when you fail and try not to fail the next time. There is no science to this thing with kids, much less with kids with a disability. So keep on trying your best and know that we are here for you anytime you want to check in. Yeah, I agree. I think my number one parenting philosophy is to live by example. And I think that my my dad with CMT did that for me, not just with CMT, but with everything he tackled in life. And that's my number one goal with, with my kids. If, if you have CMT, you know, you're going to be okay. And this is what it looks like to be okay with CMT. Let's take one quick one from Gail Buke. I see oh. you have your hand up. Hi, Gail. Okay, hi. Um, I wanted, I had a couple of comments quickly on the insurance issue and it is an issue. Um, mm -hmm. I have a friend with CMTX and she has four daughters and oh. they had chosen not to have them tested because they know they will be denied insurance down the line or very likely could. And you know what the tenor is politically right now, we could lose it at any time. Um, and my son who has um, tried many times has been denied and denied and denied because he uses a wheelchair. He's healthy, but he uses a wheelchair. And he's the wait list in California for the California one where they have to take you is over 10 years. So there you go. But that's just a that's just how the issues people are running into. He was a spontaneous mutation, diagnosed at, well, it took years, but I um, mean, it took a few years, but he was in, um, leg braces at age three. And I told him, I just simply said, gee, your brother wears glasses that helps him see. So-and-so has a hearing aid and that helps him hear. You can see those and you're gonna wear these because this will help you walk. And he's like, well, okay, you know, that, that was it. You know, he just accepted it. And so then he was, um, we got, there just wasn't testing at that time. He's 49, I mean, it, there was no testing, there was no CMTA. We, we went, had to go to a multiple um, muscular dystrophy and it was a sub, sub, subset set uh, to find a neurologist, et cetera. But my point now is what I'd like to suggest is sometime, I have never seen an article or a discussion or anything in CMT regarding uh, teaching your child how to advocate for themselves. Oh. This was the thing I did throughout his life was to teach him to stand up and advocate, not just to be assertive, not aggressive, but to be assertive so that he could stand up and say, I need this or go to a teacher and say, I'm having trouble with this. I might need more time to, not to have me have to go in yeah. and stand in there all the time, be in the chatty box mother who's always on the scene. So I didn't wanna be that way. And I didn't want him to be that way. And he became great at that. I'm That's great. You, That's great advice. That, where mm -hmm. he knows, I mean, and then I just let him go. And then when he went off to college, I mean, he was in a wheelchair by 12. He, he went off to college and I'm like, how can you go? I'm not going to be there. And he said, adios, you know, and he was fine because he had that confidence. Um, but I would, I do think it's important that we teach the kids how to advocate for themselves. We can't always be advocating for them. They've got to learn that, and that's a process. And um, I think that, um, you know, focusing on what they can do. I mean, I knew the kid, but he lost his ability to oppose his thumbs when he was seven, by the time he was seven. Well, I wasn't going to put him in with a violin or a trumpet. Right. I, 
you know, steered him through other things and said, why don't you try this? Why don't you try mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he tried and then he did things for a while until he could no longer do it. And he had to accept that. Sorry. That, that's just life. So that was my only comment, my couple of comments. Thank you. I love that, Gail. I absolutely love having them advocate for themselves. You have to learn how to ask. And I'm, I'm really seeing with the younger generation <laughs> that they're, um, because they live on technology and they communicate via technology, that sometimes those human asks are hard to come by. Um, and my daughter will say, you mean I have to call and, and talk to someone on the phone? And I, it, will you do it for me? And I will absolutely not. So I love, love, love that advice. That's wonderful. And I think we all have something we can do. Um, and I think, you know, living in shiny examples to our children, even if, even if we're struggling, it's okay to talk about that too. Don't pretend everything's fine. If you're having a bad CMT day, that's life with CMT. But we loved being here with you all tonight. We're thinking, you know, if people are interested, we turn this into a series. And um, um, we'll put Elizabeth on the spot next time. I really want her to share how she helped to go into the classrooms with Johan and do really neat um, presentations on CMT so that his peers and classmates could learn what it feels to live like life with CMT and what that might look like. So. I think we'll do this again. Thank you for coming as far away as Australia and joining us. And we just have the most wonderful community members and we were thrilled to have time with you all. So thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again. Have a wonderful long weekend, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank for, good luck, for coming everybody. Out. Bye. Go out of the way. Thank you. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. Woo! Feel the right too. Bye. 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 Thank you, guys. I really think I swallowed a bug. Hi there, Michael. A bug? Hello. How are you? Good, good. What are you doing? Oh, I'm talking to the CMT. There's a meeting. Okay, hi. Don't like this me. Fun. The house. Some camp <laughs> for, it's going to be another two months, right? Hey, yo. Yeah. Two months. One month. <laughs> One month. Relaxing in my gorgeous. That's right. We're almost in July now. <laughs> I can't wait to meet that little guy. <laughs> <laughs> When's the next three month uh, youth meeting? It's uh, yeah. August. I was going to mention that. It's August. Sir, how do you like my very August organized 29th. house? Even though I okay, so it's after the camp. Yeah, yeah, after camp. Sign up for the youth database and you'll get all the messages for that. I'm going back in my house. Okay. The link is in the chat. Right. Great. Thanks. You're so welcome. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Have fun.